test for optimality, modified distribution method or MODI method. Step 1. Determine an initial basic feasible solution using any one of the three methods Northwest corner method, least cost method, and Robles approximation method. We would mostly prefer Robles approximation method. Step 2. Determine the values of dual variables u a and v j using u a plus v j equal to c i j. Step 3. Compute the opportunity cost using d i j equal to c i j minus of u a plus v j. Step 4. Check the sign of each opportunity cost. If the opportunity costs of all the unoccupied cells are either positive or zero, the given solution is the optimal solution. On the other hand, if one or more unoccupied cell has negative opportunity cost, the given solution is not an optimal solution. And further savings in the transportation cost are possible. Step 5. Select the unoccupied cell with the smallest negative opportunity cost as the cell to be included in the next solution. Step 6. Draw a closed path or loop for the unoccupied cell selected in the previous step. Please note that the right angle turn in this path is permitted only at the occupied cells and at the original unoccupied cell. Step 7. Assign alternate plus and minus signs at the unoccupied cells on the corner points of the closed path with a plus sign at the cell having uh, at the cell being evaluated. Step 8. Determine the maximum number of units that should be shipped to this unoccupied cell. The smallest value with a negative position on the closed path indicates the number of units that can be shipped to the entering cell. Now add this quantity to all the cells on the corner points of the closed path marked with plus signs and subtract it from those cells marked with minus signs. In this way, an unoccupied cell becomes an occupied cell. Repeat the whole procedure until an optimal solution is obtained. Now we can see a problem. Solve the following transportation problem, which is given in the table. First of all, we can find the solution of this transportation problem using Vogel's approximation method. We will get the initial basic solution. Then the allocation table is shown here. From this allocation table, we can find the minimum total transportation cost that is equal to 102. So this is the initial solutions. The initial cost we got it as 102. Next we can modify. We can uh, find the better solution to this problem using the modified method or modi method. Now we can find the optimality test using modi method. First of all write the allocation table as shown in the table. Then these cells S1, D1, S1, D2, S2, D4, S3, D1, S3, D3, S3, D4. These are known as the occupied cells. Other cells are known as unoccupied cells. So first we have to form the iteration 1 of optimality test. What we have to do is find the dummy variables u i and v j for all occupied cells were c i j equal to u i plus v j. Next substitute u 3 equal to 0. That means we can give any of these u i v j equal to 0. That is these are only dummy variables. We can give any of u i v j 0. Here we are giving u 3 equal to 0. Then find the values of this ui vj corresponding to these cells. So we know that c31 equal to u3 plus v1. That implies v1 equal to c31 minus u3. Put u3 
zero. So C three one is the cost in the cell corresponding to S three D one. So that is the cost is five. Five plus zero, we will get V one equal to five. Similarly, look at next allocated cell that is. C11, C11 equal to U1 plus V1. Then we can calculate U1 equal to C11 minus V1. Then U1 equal to substitute the value. C11 is the cost in the corresponding cell. Cost is two. Then value V1 equal to five. Like that we can calculate all the values of UIs and VJs. Next, write this UI VJ values as shown in the table. We all got the values U1 equal to minus 3, U2 equal to minus 8, U3. We have put it as 0. Then V1 is 5, V2 equal 0, V3 equal 15, V4 equal 9. Using these values, we can calculate DIJ values for the unoccupied cells for DIJ equal to CIJ minus of UI plus VJ. Then look at this unoccupied cells. That is the first unoccupied cell is corresponding to S1 D3. That is D13. D13 equal to C13 minus of U1 plus V3. C13 is the first in the corresponding cell. First is here it is 11 minus of U1 plus V3 values are here. Substitute is minus 3 plus 15. Then simplify will get as minus 1. Then put this minus one value in that unoccupied cell. From the next, you can see the value from the next table. So corresponding to that cell, D13 values minus one. Put the values in the square brackets. Then similarly calculate next unoccupied cell that is D14. You can calculate the corresponding values one. So put that value in that unoccupied cell in square bracket. Like that, we calculate all the values corresponding to the unoccupied cell and put the values in square bracket. From the above table, if all the values of D I J are greater than or equal to zero, that shows that the optimality condition is reached. Otherwise, we have to improve the solution. That means, from the above values. We can see that all the values are not greater than or equal to zero. There are negative values. That means the solution is not optimal. We have to improve the solution. Now choose the minimum negative value from all D I J. D I J denotes the opportunity cost. So of these values, there is a tie. We can choose arbitrarily. We can choose the first value that corresponds to D one three. That negative value that is minus one. From starting from That cell, we can form, we can draw a closed loop or closed path starting from that cell. That is from S1 D3. If the closed path starts from S1 D3, that will go to S1 D1, then S1, then S3 D1 to S3 D3, then again go to that cell S1 D3. That is, form a closed path. That is known as a loop. There is a condition. The con, that is, that loop corner points of the loop must contain most of the occupied cells. In that way, we try to draw a loop. That is, starting from the unoccupied cell, then draw a square or rectangle. Whatever it is, it's a closed path. The corner points starting from this. Then move on to the this cell. That means next corner point must be an occupied cell. Then we move on to the next occupied cell. Then move on to next occupied cell. Then again that close that we move on to the unoccupied cell. Like that we can draw a closed path, which is known as a loop. The condition is maximum. There are uh, here four corner points. Out of this four four corner points. Three corner points must be occupied cell. In such a way, we can draw a loop.
then closed path and we give plus minus sign allocation so the unoccupied cell we can give a plus sign then occupied cell that is minus mi plus minus plus minus in that way we can give the allocation which is shown in the next table so starting unoccupied cell we have to give a plus next cell next corner point minus then plus minus like that way we can draw a rectangle then next what we have to do is out of this plus minus sign look at this cell with negative sign cell with negative sign then minimum allocated value among all negative position on a closed path of these values find the minimum allocated value that is the cell s1 d1 and cell s3 d3 we have given negative values then the corresponding okay allocated value we have to see that of this 1 and 3 the minimum is 1 then subtract this value 1 from all negatives and add it to all positive like that way we can form the next table look at the next table then we can see that here this from this cell if we subtract the value this become okay, there is no allocation that means unoccupied cell become occupied cell and occupied cell become unoccupied that we are going to do okay that means like, uh, like the LPP one variable enter one we have to leave that is the way we are going to do then here the cell s1 d1 becomes unoccupied and the cell s1 d3 become occupied so this is our new table that is one variable enter one variable leaves okay similar to the lpp so one cell become occupied other cell become unoccupied so this is the new table next we have to do the procedure as we have done earlier steps repeat the steps 1 to 4 until an optimal solution is obtained so we move on to iteration 2 of optimality test find ui and vj for all occupied cells for ci is equal to ui plus vj then it gives any of this ui vj value 0 here again we can give u3 equal to 0 okay, you can give any value no problem give u3 equal to 0 then based on this value we can calculate values for the occupied cells calculate these values put the values of uis and vjs as shown in the table next find dij for all unoccupied cells for dij equal to cij minus of ui plus vj ui vj values are shown in the table then we can calculate dij values in for the unoccupied cells if all dij values are greater than or equal to 0 the solution is an optimal solution but here also there is a negative value that occurs in the s2 d3 that is d23 is negative that means we have to improve the solution then starting from this cell we have to again draw a loop which contains most of the occupied cells then draw a closed path from s2 d3 to s2 d4 then to s3 d4 then to s3 d3 then go on to next step we can close this s2 d3 okay this is the square containing this corner points contains most of the occupied cells then next step you give starting from the unoccupied cell plus put plus then minus plus minus which is shown in the next table then of this plus minus signs look at the negative sign cell with the negative sign from this cell with negative sign minimum of the allocated value minimum of 1 and 2 is 1 then this 1 we have to subtract from the corresponding cell 
and we have to add in the corresponding plus cell with plus sign. Then that means occupied cell, unoccupied cell become occupied and occupied cell become unoccupied. One variable and the one variable list. That is the procedure we are going to do. So this is our new table. Here the previous unoccupied cell become occupied with an allocated value 1. Then occupied cell becomes unoccupied. So this is the new table in iteration 2. Next repeat the steps 1 to 4 until an optimal solution is obtained. Iteration 3 of optimality test. Again find UI VJ of all of occupied cells. Then calculate DIJs for all unoccupied cells. From all DIJ values we can see that all values are greater than or equal to 0. That indicates that the optimal solution is reached and the table is shown here. So the final optimal solution is arrived and the table is as shown in the figure. Then calculate the minimum total transportation cost. That's equal to 3 into 5 plus 11 into 1 plus 6 into 1 plus 5 into 7 plus 15 into 1 plus 9 into 2. That's equal to 100. So this is the minimal transportation cost.